This video is all about uh, solving linear equations in one variable, uh, section 1.1. Now because this is a pre-calculus class, much of this material should already be uh, easily understood and known. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining, I'm just going to go through a series of examples. So this first one, 3 times x minus 2 plus 2 times 3 minus x equals 1. Um, you know, so to solve this, simplify the left-hand side completely and the right-hand side completely. Uh, get all the variables to one side. Uh, and then divide um, to get the variable by itself. So we're going to have x plus 12 equals, uh, or rather... Um, the 6 and the negative 6 cancel, so we get x plus 0 equals 1. So that's actually pretty straightforward. These cancel out. So x equals 1 here. Uh, let's look at a second example. What we want to do in this example is uh, clear out all the fractions, or clear out all the denominators, and we do that by multiplying by the least common denominator of all the fractions. So we have 7, 6, and then this is 1 over 1. So the least common denominator here is 42. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this. What I like to do is just multiply each term by that least common denominator. So 42 here, 42 here, 42 here. And then what happens is, um, before we multiply out, I can reduce this 42 and the 7. So 42 divided by 7 is 6. So we get 6 times 2 minus 3x. 42 divided by 6, we get 7. So plus 7x minus 1. And then 1 times 42 is 42. And then from here, this is much like the last example. Um, we'll just multiply everything out and uh, simplify each side independently. Um, so we have 12 and negative 7 is 5, negative 18x and 7x, that's um, negative 11x uh, equal 42. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides, we get 37 here, and then divide both sides by negative 11. So we get x equals negative 37 over 11. Um, another example, we just have uh, a couple sets of parentheses. We have this set of parentheses nested inside the brackets. So we'll work from the inside out. 5x minus 3x. Now this 2 is only getting distributed here, which gives us 2x minus 2 equal to 1. Um, and then this is a negative sign here. I can write that as a negative 1 if we want, um, just so we know that we're multiplying each term inside the brackets by negative 1. So we get 5x minus negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x minus 2x plus 2 is equal to 1. We can combine these terms here, and we actually get 0x there, or just 2 on the left-hand side. Now when we get something like this, 2 is obviously not equal to 1, so we would say that there is no solution. Now what this means is there is no value that we could input into uh, the original equation 4x that will make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. Um, so we don't really want to say undefined here. Undefined we reserve for um, division by zero, um, or taking the, the square root of a negative. Um, so we don't really want to say uh, undefined when we get something like this. Precisely we want to say no solution, because when we're solving an equation we are looking for the solution. And if we end up with something in this form, this equation cannot be solved. In these next couple examples we're going to be solving equations for specified variables. So here we have t equals z plus n minus 1 all times d, and we're trying to solve for d. So we want to get the d all by itself. Um, so what we'll do first is subtract z from both sides. We get t minus z equals n minus 1 
multiplied by d. Now to get d all by itself, let's not even multiply through here. We don't even need to distribute. I'm just going to divide both sides by n minus 1. And that cancels on the right-hand side, so we get t minus z over n minus 1 is equal to the variable d, which is what we're trying to uh, solve for. Moving on, um, let's solve this equation for v. 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get this term isolated by itself first. So we'll have 1 over f minus 1 over u equals 1 over uh, v here. Now it's tempting to, to do this. Since we're trying to get to solve for v, we have 1 over v, so it's tempting to say, well, this is just f over 1 minus u over 1 equals v over 1, which is just v. Now, this is not precisely true, um, so let's look at a numerical example and see why this is not true. If we were to say 1 over 2, or rather, let's say 2 over 1 plus 3 over 1, well, that is equal to 5 over 1. Now, let's take the reciprocal of all of these fractions and see if this equation still holds true. Uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, does that equal 1 over 5? Well, not quite, because this is 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6. We get 5 over 6, and that is very clearly not equal to 1 over 5. So, um, at this point here, we don't want to just take the reciprocal of each of the fractions. What we need to do first is get a common denominator between these two fractions um, because once we get a single fraction on each side of the equal sign then we can take the reciprocal of both sides of the equal sign. So what we're going to do is um, the common denominator is going to be uf so I'm going to multiply this fraction by u over u this fraction by f over f and we can do that because these are just versions of 1. We have u over uf minus f over uf. Now I can write this as a single fraction. u minus f over uf equals 1 over v. Now we can take the reciprocal of both sides of the equal sign. And we're going to have uf over u minus f equals v over 1 or just v. The next example here uh, we want to look at because on this one the variable we're trying to solve for which is L L is appearing in two separate terms so we have something like this we want to factor out the variable we're trying to solve for so we can factor out L from both terms here and then at this point if we divide by 2w plus 2h that'll get the L all by itself so we're going to say s over 2w plus 2h is equal to um, just l here. And then the last two examples um, are word type problems. This one says the sum of three consecutive even integers is 42. Find the integers. So sum just means um, addition. So or the answer to an addition problem. So what we're going to say, or what we're saying is, three things are adding together to equal 42. And these three things that are adding together are consecutive even integers. So first thing to realize is what an integer is. And an integer is just any positive or negative whole number. So um, the integers we could say are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now if we're talking about even integers, you know, an even number is divisible evenly <laughs> or divisible by 2. So uh, 10 is an even integer, 46 is an even integer, 5,280 is an even integer. Also the negatives, negative 6, negative 5, uh, sorry, negative 16, negative 38, these are all even integers. So what this is saying is three consecutive even integers. So an example of three consecutive consecutive even integers would be something like um, 20, 22, 24. This is an example of three consecutive even integers. 
Now, for this question, we want those even integers to add up to 42. Now, let's just see. Does 20, 22, and 24, does the sum of those equal 42? Well, 20 plus 22 plus 24, that's equal to 68. So, does not equal 42. Now, we want to try and find the correct three even integers that are consecutive that add up to 42. Now, how we go about this is... Well, let's say x is the first integer in the, the series. The next integer, well, um, looking at this example, the first integer we had 20, and then the next integer to get to that, we just add 2. So x plus 2 would be the second even integer. And then to get from 20 to 24, we add 4. So x plus 4 equals the third integer. And this will always hold true. If we're talking about three consecutive even integers, we add x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 together. And we want to have that sum to 42. Now this would be the exact same uh, procedure if we had odd integers, three consecutive odd integers. Uh, we can still use x, x plus 2 and x plus 4 because odd integers are still three, or sorry, two numbers away from each other. So solving this equation, we get x equals 12. So 12 is our first even integer. Our second even integer, well, we just add 2 to that. And then we add 4 uh, to get the third even integer. So 12, 14, and 16. Those three numbers all add up to 42. And then lastly, find the value of k so that 3x minus 1 equals k and 7x plus 2 equals 16 are equivalent. Now what we mean by equivalent here is we just want x to have the exact same value in each of these. Um, so if we were to solve 4x uh, in each equation um, and x came out to be the same number in both equations, then we would say these equations are equivalent to each other. So there's probably a couple of different ways we can do this. How I'm going to do this is um, solve this first equation for x. 3x minus 1 equals k. Add 1 to both sides. Then divide by 3. We get x equals k plus 1 divided by 3. And so we have a value for x. Now I'm going to substitute that into the second equation. We will have 7 times k plus 1 over 3 plus 2 equals 16. Um, and then let's solve this for k. Um, so here we have 7 over 1. Uh, distribute the 7. We get 7x plus 7 over 3 plus 2 is equal to 16. Subtract 2 from both sides. We get uh, 14. Multiply both sides by 3. Oops, multiply both sides by 3. The 3 cancels. We get 7x plus 7 equals 42. Subtract 7 and then divide by 7. We get x equal to 5. Wait a second, my x has turned into k's somewhere along the way. Let me fix that. All right, going through um, changing, fixing that. A uh, little mistake. We have k is equal to 5 here at the very end. Now let's just see, um, are these going to be equivalent to each other, uh, these two equations? So the first equation, we have 3x minus 1 equals k. So let's substitute 5 in for k. 3x minus 1 equals 5. We get 3x equals 6, so we have an x value of 2. And then... Um, if we check x equals 2 in that second equation, does that hold true? 7 times 2 plus 2, does that equal 16? Well, yes, 14 plus 2 equals 16, so 16 equals 16, and we, we have it. So um, the answer to the question, the value of k would be 5. That would make these equations um, equivalent.